First, let's start by creating a new React project. Now, let's run the project just to validate that it's working. Next, let's create a components folder. And inside the folder, we are going to create a main component. We are going to keep it simple because we'll focus on the speech recognition functionality. Let's delete everything in the app component and replace it with the main component we just created. Now let's create a hooks folder. We are going to contain the speech recognition functionality inside its own custom hook so we can reuse it across our application. This way you can reuse this custom hook and use it on your own application, regardless of how it's structured. We are going to make use of the web speech API, which is currently supported on most modern browsers. In this case, I am going to use Google Chrome just to validate that it's working. We are going to start by declaring the use speech recognition hook. As mentioned in the documentation, since this is still an experimental feature, we first need to validate if the browser has support for it. For this, we are going to check if the speech recognition object is available on the window object. And if it is, we are going to set the recognition variable to a new instance of the speech recognition object. Currently, TypeScript is complaining because it doesn't recognize the speech recognition API. For this, we are going to install the typings for this feature. Just remember, this is not a library. It's simply the typings for TypeScript of the speech recognition API. This is completely optional. Next, let's set the continuous attribute to true. The continuous attribute allows us to get multiple results. And language to English. Let's move down the custom hook. We need a text state so we can store the result of the speech recognition. Let's initialize it to an empty string. We are also going to create an is listening variable. This is a boolean that will tell us when the device's microphone is listening. Next, we are going to use a use effect hook to initialize the device recognition listener when the component loads. First, we check if we have the recognition object we created at line 3. Remember, if we don't have support, this will be null. Next, we set up the unresolved event listener. This event listener triggers when the browser gets a result from the voice recognition. The event we get in response is a speech recognition result which is an object containing the text the browser managed to part from the voice. We can type it if we install the typings previously. This way, we get auto-completion. Let's print the event to the console so we can see what we get. This event will trigger each time the browser finishes recognizing our voice. Let's also stop the recognition. And we are going to set is listening to false. Now let's create a start listening function so we can control the recognition. Now let's create a start listening function so we can control the recognition. We will empty the current text variable and then we are going to set is listening to true. After that, we will use the start function of the recognition object to tell the browser to start listening to our voice. When we finish speaking, this will trigger the unresolved event. We will also create a stop listening function and make use of the stop function of the speech recognition object. Finally, let's return the text and is listening states and the start listening function. I also typed is listening incorrectly, so let's fix that. We are also going to return a has recognition support variable to tell if we have access to the speech recognition API. We are simply going to use the recognition object and use it as a boolean. Back in the main component, let's use the use speech recognition custom hook we just created and import the variable and functions we return. Now let's first use the has recognition support variable and show a message if not. And if it has support, we will show a button that will execute the start listening function when clicked. When doing that, the browser will request microphone access and start recording. It will only ask for Microsoft access the first time. Let's also display a message to let the user know that the browser is recording his voice. Next, let's click the start listening button and start speaking. Testing. Let's see the event that we printed to the console. As you can see, 
It is a speech recognition event object with multiple attributes. Inside this object, there is a results attribute, which in itself is an array of a speech recognition result arrays. The first element of this array is the recognized text. So we need to go two levels deeper inside the array to get the transcript string. We can see the structure of this object in the documentation. The speech recognition result is an interface of the Web Speech API. Back in our application, we can now set the text state to this transcript string, which is the first element of the first element of the results object. And with this, we can finally show the recognized text to the user. Let's record again. Testing the application. As you can see, the onResult event triggered again, and we got a new speech recognition result object. Let's also add a stop listening function. By default, the browser will stop listening when we stop speaking but we can also force it to stop by using the stop function. Let's record one last time. Like the video and subscribe to the channel.